apart from the nationalist and pacifist ways of countering the British, there was a third way that was growing steadily, armed struggle. They were not sepoys or members of the British army. They were ordinary citizens who learnt how to use weapons and armoury. They created secret networks and organisations with the least regard for their own lives and extreme passion for their cause of liberating the motherland. These revolutionaries instilled the spirit of freedom in more Indians with each passing day. Some of the popular leaders who led the armed struggle for Indian independence were Vasudev Balwant Phadke, Ram Singh Kukka and Birsa Munda. The British sensed that the mood across the nation was no different from how it was before 1857. With the armed struggle at one hand and the rise of nationalistic fervour among the educated youth on the other hand, the British understood the growing political discontent. The British also obtained information from secret agents that revolts could break out anytime in various districts across the country. After the nightmares of 1857, the British could not afford another nationwide uprising. It was important for them to prevent the rebellion than to quell after its rise. They came up with a plan. They envisaged their new organization with members from the intellectual community of English educated Indians, but headed by a Britisher. This would make the Indians feel represented. The British wanted to create a goodwill that the government would lend its ears to peaceful appeals of the Indians. The British put out the fire of revolution through this committee. It was called the Indian National Congress, formed in 1885. A.O. Hume was the founder of the INC. He was one of the Britishers who escaped from the revolutionaries during the 1857 War of Independence by wearing a sari and posing as a woman. The Congress leaders appealed often to the British through petitions regarding issues of governance, seeking to correct the loopholes of the administration, reduce taxes, recruit Indians in high offices, etc. Even a partial acceptance of some of these demands were deemed as an act of benevolence of the British towards Indians. By the end of the first decade of the 20th century, Bharat was in a precarious situation. Sri Aurobindo had quit revolutionary politics and embarked on a spiritual journey. Bipin Chandrapal had retired from active politics. Tilak was transported to Burma and VOC was undergoing rigorous imprisonment. The independence movement witnessed its toughest time during these days. However, it was not the end. The next batch of revolutionaries were in the making. The cause of India's independence was taken to foreign lands. The Congress party that had lost its credibility in the eyes of the people reinvented itself with the arrival of new set of pacifists. The British breathed a sigh of relief with a temporary break. But these great souls had prepared a fertile ground of nationalism and the seed of patriotism had been sown. The tree of independence was only a brief time away. Vinayak Damodar Savarkar had a huge role to play in sowing the thought of revolution in India. His role models were Chhatrapati Shivaji, Rana Pratap, Swami Vivekananda and more. He formed the first organized secret society of India to work for India's independence when he was just 16 years old. He was inspired by the lives of revolutionaries from other countries. He started Abhinava Bharat, Young India, just like Mazini's Young Italy. Savarkar was the first to call for a total and absolute independence of Bharat Purna Swaraj in 1904. Savarkar also conceived an idea of infiltration into the armed forces and police recreating a rebellion like that of 1857. An Oxford-educated Indian scholar and revolutionary, Shamji Krishna Verma, purchased a house in London just so that he could sponsor and host a lot of young Indians with a revolutionary bent of mind. He started a branch of Abhinava Bharat there too. He inspired many students who became revolutionary leaders later. The flag designed by Savakar with the words Bande Mataram written on it was unfurled by Madame Kama at the International Socialist Congress, which was held in 1907 in Germany. Sitting in London, he was able to orchestrate rebellions all over the world for India's freedom. The British police finally recognized the kingpin behind various revolutionary activities and arrested him. He was sentenced to transportation for life at the dreaded Andaman Cellular Jail with a double life sentence of 50 years, the maximum years of imprisonment in the history of India's freedom struggle. Apart from this, Savarkar's law degree was annulled. His properties worth Rs 33,725 were auctioned, and even his cooking pots, utensils, etc. from his house was seized. Beyond all this, when he was received at the Andaman Cellular Jail, 
the jailer told him behave yourself you have to be here for 50 years savarkar replied the british will not be here for 50 years he coped with all physical hardships and mental torture in jail the fire of savarkar heated up the anti british engine in india and abroad lala hardial founded the gadhar movement rash bihari bose and sachindranath sanyal organized and executed critical plans through the anushilan samiti the dark and grave incident in indian history the jallianwala bag massacre by general dyer and his troops happened in april 1919 when the british police open fired on peaceful protesters 1200 were killed leaving 3500 wounded unarmed men women children elderly all were shot at without discrimination this incident gave rise to many revolutionaries udham singh was a witness to this bloody massacre in which he lost his sister and brother this incident left a lasting impression in him that he waited for 21 years meticulously planned and took revenge he shot michael dyer who approved the order for the massacre of jallianwala bag when sanyal was released from andaman jail in 1919 he started the hindustan republican association along with ram prasad bismil rajendra lahiri ashwakulla khan in 1923 The young members of HRA decided to reclaim the money that the British had looted from India. The revolutionaries saw an opportunity when they learned about a train that was going to carry money from the British treasury. They took down a train that was running from Shah Jahanpur to Lucknow. In the Kakori train episode, many of the revolutionaries were arrested and hanged. The mantle was passed on to the next set of leaders: Chandrasekhar Azad, Bhagat Singh, Sukhdev, Rajguru. Jatin Das and more HRA became HSRA Hindustan Socialist Republican Association Bhagat Singh translated Savarkar's book on 1857 War of Independence into Punjabi He made the reading of the book a prerequisite for one to join HSRA with an objective to highlight the aims of HSRA and to arouse the public sentiments against British oppression Bhagat Singh planned a daring act His plan was to throw bombs at the Central Legislative Assembly at Delhi in such a way that no one is hurt or killed and then to surrender to the police. In April 1929, Bhagat Singh and Bhatikeshwar Dutt executed the plan. They shouted slogans, Inkulab Zindabad, long live the revolution, down with imperialism and through leaflets. Their rationale for the bombing was explained in a leaflet titled, To Make the Deaf Hear. The two men were arrested and subsequently moved to Delhi jail. When he saw the discrimination between Indian and foreign prisoners, he and his group of revolutionaries launched an unimaginable 116 days of fast. At the end of it, the prison authorities promised better food and living conditions. When Bhagat Singh, Sukhdev, Rajguru were given death penalty, the trio walked to the gallows with utmost happiness and satisfaction without an iota of fear or regret. They were around 23 years old then. Do you know how Chandrasekhar Tiwari was known as Chandrasekhar Azad? How the surname Azad got added to Chandrasekhar? Chandrasekhar, when he was at the age of 15, fought against British to protest the Jallianwala Bagh massacre. And British sentenced him to 15 lashes. On that day, he decided that he would never get caught again. He is ever free, Azad. British could never lay their hands on Azad. He used many disguises to escape the British. In fact, he lived as a pundit near a Hanuman temple on the banks of the Satar River. Did you know he worked as the driver of the very petrol vehicle which was searching for him? Unfortunately, his own associates slipped his location to the British police, and they rounded up at the park to kill him. Azad took refuge behind a huge tree and waged a counter fight. When finally Azad had one last bullet left, he shot himself dead rather than surrender to the British. The park in the Prayagraj is called Azad Park now. The gun he last used is treasured and is on display at the Azad Park today. Please visit. Inkulab Zindabad Inkulab Zindabad Bande Mataram Bande Mataram 